Calvin Jones here with the Park Tool Company. In past episodes, we've discussed the one-by system. If you have a one-by or convert it to a one-by and you're having shifting problems, it might be because of chain line issues. What is chain line? Chain line is the relationship of the sprockets to the center line of the bike. And the center line of the bike is an imaginary line running straight through the middle of your bike, right up the middle. In some ways, chain line can be considered a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it situation. So why care about chain line? Why understand this? Because the relationship of our front sprocket to the rear sprocket determines several things. The quality of shifting, the noise you can get or don't get. If our chain is dropping off, even the size of tire that you can run. Let's look first at the chain line up front. Cranks nowadays, come to a hard stop into the bearing that lets the manufacturer dictate where they think the ring is going to be to the middle of the bike. So you can often just look these numbers up in the manufacturer's literature. We can also measure to get a good idea where the ring is sitting to the center line. On a lot of bikes now, we're seeing an offset seat tube. It's not really sitting in the middle right by the bottom bracket. So, look for a tube that is symmetrical, commonly the down tube. So we're going to rotate, get good access to that. We want the mid line here. We're going to measure this tube, split it in half. We're going to go from the center of the ring over, add that up, see what we get. So we want to measure consistently here. We're going to come in here. 75.8, let's call it 76. These are going to be soft numbers. We come from the frame, the same point we measured at, over to the center of the ring. 15.1, let's go 15. So we take our 76, split it in two. We have uh, 38. We take our 15 and our 38, we end up 53. Are we really that 53? Machining is not exactly perfect. The bearings are probably pretty consistent. There's definitely a little wiggle room there. Typically not enough to make a big difference. Pretty much 53 on the chain line. On a double crank set, we want the middle between the two rings. A little more complex. Here, I measure from the outside face, take the number, I go from the outside face of the small ring, I take that number, add the two together, divide it in two, that gives me the middle. If it's a triple, we're back to simplicity. We're looking simply for that middle ring to our frame. For the rear chain line, we're looking for the center of the cassette to the center line of the bike. It's a little more complex and takes a little deduction. Simple way is to take the cassette off. So here we lay it on a flat table. This has a flat back plate. We lay it down. We use our depth gauge, 41. I want to write that down. I'll need it later. This one is a little more complex. Here, there's some rivets. You'll see sometimes rivets in the back. I don't want to include those, so we can let our digital caliper do the math for us. I measure that slight protrusion. It's lifting it off the table. I zero it out. I zero it out at that distance. Now I can come from the top as before. It's taking that out for me. 40.99, let's go 41. That's the width of this cassette. Reinstall the cassette, reinstall the wheel. We are concerned with how the hub sits in the bike. This is a 148 boost hub, but as it's bolted in the bike, we have dropout to dropout 141. That's the number that concerns us. So from half of that, 70.5, from 70.5 millimeters from the center to this dropout and to the dropout, 
That's the mid plane, the center plane of the bike. We're going to need that when we do our next deduction. So we know the width of the cassette. We now need the distance from that outer face of that small cog to the dropout. There is no industry standard for this. It can be as little as two and a half, sometimes as many as five. In this case, we have three millimeters. So we know three millimeters here, we're going to add that to half the distance here. So a little calculation, three plus 20.5, that's half of our 41. We're going to deduct that from the 70.5, because we know that's the mid-plane here, it's going to be 47. So this cassette stack, the center of it is 47 from the middle of the bike. Back to the front ring. This model's coming in at a 53 chain line. At first, you might be thinking those two numbers should be the same. That's not the way it is, especially in an off-road bike. On road bikes, we do see much closer. This Dura-Ace crank is coming in at a 43.5 chain line, pretty much what we get in the back. But on an off-road, there's different issues to be dealt with. This bike coming stock, we get all the gears, it works, it ain't broke, as we said. But if we were to switch, for example, change the system out to this boost tub with the 12 speed. Now we're looking at a chain line here, that would come in at 45, even a bigger difference. Then you might start seeing some problems. We might get some chain dropping, we're gonna get more noise, and we might even get some chain rub on the tire. So things need to move. They're not gonna move back here. This cassette's not gonna come over. We can't make any manipulation back here on the rear hub. Change has gotta come from the front at the chain ring. Again, we've seen that the spindle has that hard stop. The crank really isn't moving left and right, but the chain rings can. Certain models come with built-in spacers. You can often get different rings of different designs, even different brands that allow you to move it, especially inward when needed. But there are limits. We're gonna see that we don't wanna hit the frame. This ring just clears. It's pretty darn close, especially concerning pedaling load. You wouldn't want to move any more inward on this situation. There certainly is an industry trend for moving things outward, and it makes sense. But remember, it's the differential between the rear and the front that's really going to affect our shifting. So being out, being biased outward in front, we are not going to be taking the chain and striking the neighboring cogs when we're out in our bigger gears. When you shift up to your easier, larger cogs, that's really not an issue. Now, a shorter chainstay bike with the larger tires, we're also getting good tire clearance. This here looks like a pretty big gap, but remember, with any luck, we're gonna have mud and leaves in here and lots of junk. It's gonna get smaller and smaller. So clearance here is good you're also going to pick up some issues. Here, we get a really nice clattering noise. It's just going to be noisy. We come out a few gears. Quiet, nice and smooth. The chain is dropping straight onto the front ring. But because we have here a large differential, we're just going to end up with that clatter. Not so great on the chain wear, Makes a funny noise, big deal, and it really broke. Don't need to fix it. Another problem with a big differential can be going the wrong way. We got chain control issues. What's going on? We don't have our guide pulley. Pedaling forward, this pulley guides us nicely under the sprocket. But going the wrong way, this becomes the guide pulley. With that kind of distance and that kind of angle, you just aren't going to have good control. Solution, don't do this. If you need to time a corner or a rock, a half, half a turn, it's all you get. Doesn't happen all the time, but when it happens, 
don't do that. So see how your bike is behaving. See if it needs a change. Let it tell you what's going on. Otherwise, stick to that old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. See you next time. Thanks for watching. You can find hundreds more videos like this one on our channel here on YouTube. And we're constantly working on more. So be sure to subscribe for the latest content from Park Tool. And check out our website, which has even more content to help you make your bike better.